do one thing every day to move your business forward. Um, Find out what works and be consistent about doing it. This is The Entrepreneur Way with Neil Ball. Unlocking the secrets of successful entrepreneurs seven days a week. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball. Napoleon Hill said the power of the mastermind is the driving force. To discover how you can unlock the potential in your business using the power of a mastermind, go to mastermindunlimited.com. And now, here is your host, Neil Ball. Hello everybody, Neil Ball here. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Entrepreneur Way. The Entrepreneur Way is about the entrepreneur's journey, the vision, the mindset, the commitment, the sacrifice, failures and successes. I am so excited to bring you our special guest today, Julie Ann Wood. But before I do, I have a little bit of trivia for you. Neil deGrace Tyson said, there is always a place I can take someone's curiosity and land where they end up enlightened when we're done. That's my challenge as an educator. No one is dumb who is curious. The people who don't ask questions remain clueless throughout their lives. The Entrepreneur Way asks the questions so we all get the insight, inspiration and ideas to apply in our businesses. Julie, welcome to the show. Are you ready to share your version of the entrepreneur way with us? Yes, I'd love to. Julianne Wood is the owner of eSeedling and she is the author of More Than a Lemonade Stand and You're Never Too Young to Start a Business and creator of the BizOps Game. She's passionate about empowering youth through entrepreneurship and is helping others to do the same by providing a proven curriculum. Julie... Can you provide us with some more insight into your business and personal life to allow us to get to know more about what you do and who you are? Sure. Um, So how the e-seedling business got started is um, in my day job at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, I uh, direct a youth entrepreneur camp. And when I came here uh, about 12 years ago, the camp was in existence. Um, but we had a consultant that we had hired to teach it. And so we just pretty much uh, helped out with the camp and weren't really uh, too involved. And then in 2008, when the everyone's budgets got cut, mm. uh, our director said, well, we're going to have to cancel the camp because it's not our core mission. And I was like, no, that's the one thing I really like to do all year long Mm -hmm. because my background is in education and in um, entrepreneurship. I had a business. And so I proposed that I rewrite the curriculum and uh, so that we could teach it in-house. And so that's what I did. And it became uh, quite successful, probably more successful than it had in the early years. And people started calling me and saying, how do I start a camp? Um, how do I, you know, what do you teach them and all of that kind of stuff. And so the entrepreneur in me said, well, I think that's a business idea. Mm-hmm. And so I started e-seedling and um, so that I could start helping other people uh, put those camps into place and teach more young entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And then in my personal life, I um, have uh, two sons, 17 and 21, and I'm married and uh, have a dog, a cat and a gecko. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> Um, like to travel a lot, and uh, that's about it. Okay. Can you just tell us a little bit more about e-seedling, please, in terms of what you do? What yeah, so there? e-seedling is um, uh, what I did is I actually uh, created a whole curriculum that you could use. Uh, it's geared towards um, middle school, but a lot of high schools are actually starting to use it in like their intro to entrepreneur class. Mm-hmm. And so it has a, a whole a uh, facilitator guide that teachers can use. It has workbooks for the kids. Mm-hmm. And then I created a game called um, the BizOps game, which is a really fun, fast-paced way for kids to learn how to run a business. So basically they get a loan from the bank. They make products, which in this case are paper airplanes. Mm-hmm. They fly them on a runway that we create with duct tape, and then they earn money based on that. But they have to budget 
They get a, uh, they have to budget their raw materials, their expenses. They have to track their sales. And then the team, they played in small teams, the team uh, with the most profit wins. Uh-huh. And then the other thing that's included in the curriculum is a apprentice-style lemonade stand competition. So that's more of a big team thing. And they uh, compete, and then they raise money for the scholarship fund. That's sort of the model. And uh, the kids can raise a lot of money. Last year at one of the camps that I did, they raised over $300 in an hour. So that was pretty amazing. Fantastic. And um, they, they develop their own uh, business idea. They do a presentation. And so it's a pretty full uh curriculum that they can use for that and then there's uh tools that go with it so we have the game we have the workbooks we have uh, uh, a home version of the game because some of the kids said i want to play this at home so i created a home version and then there's the book more than a lemonade stand and now i have a new ebook for um kids that they can start their own business can you tell me where you got the name e-seedling from yeah, so e-seedling came from my first, well, probably my second because my first was definitely a lemonade stand. Yeah. Um, but the second business in Denver that I had, I was probably around 12 and I lived on a farm. My neighbor lived on a farm and we were about a mile apart. So we decided um, we both like gardening. So we decided we buy all these little seeds and these peat pots and, and um, grow these plants and sell them, right? Make mm-hmm. money. So we got the seeds, we got the pots, we planted them, we watered them, we put them in the in her shed window and I remember riding my bike down probably maybe two weeks later and they were all dead because we had never watered them. So it was like my first business failure and it was about the same age as the kids that I usually teach or the curriculum was developed for. So it's a really good, good um, uh, age for kids to start and then that's kind of how the seedling mm-hmm. name came. And the books that you've written, more than a lemonade stand, and you're never too young to start a business. Are they both aimed at kids? The more than a lemonade stand is actually for um, adults. Is it's it? actually okay. got the whole planning yeah. that um, I do when I do a camp. So it's like the whole year before. You know, this is what you do this month. These are the steps you do, and then it's got the whole entire curriculum. So mm-hmm. it's kind of a do-it-yourself guide. Yeah. So a lot of teachers like. Um, don't have large budgets. They might just want to know what should I teach these kids. It gives them ideas. There's a website, a free website that goes with it, and then they can go online and download a lot of the forms and create them themselves. So if they don't want to purchase, you know, a big fancy curriculum, then they can go to this book and they can actually use it. It also has all of the activities um, outlined step by step. So if they want to just put an activity into like a curriculum that they're already teaching that works well for that too okay thanks and the the other book i take it that that one's aimed at kids then is it yep, that's to, yeah that's aimed at kids mm-hmm. yeah so what do you enjoy most about what you do julie well it's definitely working with the kids so uh when i go into a, a situation where they're brand new kids and some kids might be really shy they don't seem very confident about their abilities and then by the end it's amazing what you see mm-hmm. they um you know they come out they're passionate about an idea they can take that idea and basically create a business and and kind of realize that they do have a say in what they can do in their life and make a difference mm-hmm. that's fantastic and what is it that drives you well it's definitely um knowing the impact that entrepreneurship can make on kids and how it really can empower them to, uh, you know, let's say they, they might come from a family that doesn't see as many possibilities as another family, um, you know, might have at home where they have a lot of, um, opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's really nice about our camps is they're super diverse. Like we have a very diverse, um, Make up. We have a lot of scholarships available, which helps it with the diversity. And what happens is, you know, in that camp, we talk about how everyone has strengths and mm-hmm. talents. You know, it doesn't matter where you come from. And then they learn that they do have strengths and they do have talents and they can make a difference. And so it empowers them mm-hmm. to be bigger than they thought they may could have before Mm -hmm. i think what you're doing is absolutely fantastic to be able to do that for kids and to to introduce entrepreneurship to them at that sort of age is just is awesome so thank you so how do you relax when you are not working in your business 
<laughs> I always think that fun, that question is funny because um, a lot of people say, do you ever relax? <laughs> <laughs> but I do. So um, uh, I love to travel with my family. Um, I do have to say we usually go to Hawaii at Christmas, which is really nice. Yeah. And um, that's a really good way to relax. Mm-hmm. And um, we do a lot of hiking, a lot of outdoor stuff. Both of my kids were scouts, so we spent a lot of time doing a lot of scout um, activities. And, and what's really fun about that is you get to do a lot of things that you never thought you would do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then musical theater. I love musical theater, so we go to shows and do things like that too. And do you have any entrepreneurial role models? Yeah, I have a, a lot of entrepreneurial ro- role models. Um, I'll just bring up a couple. Uh, okay. Diana Kander, she is um, uh, a young I would say young compared to me, uh, entrepreneur who teaches in um, Missouri, mm-hmm. and she's a Kauffman Foundation fellow, and she was a keynote at a, a conference that I presented at last summer, and she was awesome. She's very teaches a lot about experiential learning, which is what I love, and then she wrote this book called All in Startup that is I would highly recommend that book. And then Darren Hardy, I just finished The Compound Effect, Mm. and um, I really like that uh, book. Mm -hmm. I think it's a book, it's easy to read, it's short, Um, it's not anything earth-shattering, but it's a good reminder of a lot of things you need to keep in perspective when you're an entrepreneur, like um, being consistent, doing small things every day, and how they compound Mm. um, over time. Yeah, it's quite a popular book. That quite a number of people talk about mention that book when I ask them this question, or yeah. I, asked, I asked them about the favourite book. Julie, can we just cast your mind back to the time before you were an entrepreneur? I'm not sure if you'll go to the point when you were seven, but <laughs> <laughs> but can you? What difficulties did you have to overcome when you started your business? Um, so I, I guess if I'm looking at the time before I was an entrepreneur, I'll just look at the time before this this current business is I think the difficulty for me was um, probably two things. One was timing as far as like when it was right for your family, because being an entrepreneur is just not you, you know, you have to think about your family too. Mm -hmm. And then um, knowing how hard it was going to be and how many hours it was going to take because I had run a business before. So I knew how hard it was going to be and just making sure I was ready for that. Mm. I think the thing with being an entrepreneur is it's something that you feel you have to do. It's almost a vocation in life. Yeah, it and, feels like a calling. Yeah, you know, ab- it's, absolutely. It's like your purpose or whatever. And I think if, if people don't realize that's in them, then they're probably not suited to it. I think. That, yeah. That's well, the that's the nice thing about teaching young, um, younger kids is they might not even know that's in them unless they're exposed to it. Yeah. Whereas, you know, in school, they're not really exposed to that. But if they get exposed to that at a, as a, at a young age, they know that that opportunity might be there for them. Mm. And did you have any doubts that delayed you starting your business? Um, yeah, just probably knowing how hard it was and, and the timing again. So pretty much the same thing. Okay. And what mistakes did you make that slowed your journey? Um, (laughs) probably staying in my, my, uh, day job too long and not going all in because it takes a lot of time. And, you know, when you're working all day, then you go home and every night you're working on your business on the weekends, you're working on your business. You really have to prioritize your time and know where you're going to get the most bang for the buck. And sometimes you're just like, oh, just too tired to like look at the computer screen for another Mm -hmm. hour. So I think that's probably the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And... What are some of the things that you did before you started your business that would be helpful tips for some of the listeners who haven't yet taken the first step of the entrepreneur way? So um, uh, some of the things I did, well, one of the things I did um, is I went to uh, a conference called Experts Academy by Brendan Bouchard. Oh, yeah. And um, I took my husband with me and he called it the Kool-Aid session. (laughs) And um, one of the things is he teaches how to take your knowledge and your expertise and basically turn it into a business more from the marketing side than the business side. But you make a lot of connections there and um, you learn a lot about it's, you know, more talking about like um, uh, how you would do an online business or how you would do a, 
a lifestyle business like a, a coaching or a consultant or something like that. And then um, one of the things they talk about is how important a book is to that because the book is your credibility. Yeah. And so um, they talk about if you write a book, then that's kind of like your calling card, your business card. So that's how I sort of um, got started on that was that journey was to start doing the book. So I was writing the book. Mm -hmm. I did some speaking. I presented at conferences. I tried to do workshops um, and then make connections uh, Mm -hmm. with people that I thought could help me along the way. Yeah. Brenda Bouchard, he's amazing, isn't he? He's a great guy. Yeah, he is amazing. (laughs) So did you you go to to Experts Academy before you wrote the book and I did. You I did. went to Experts Academy before I wrote the book. Yeah. And then I went to um uh and then I went to Author 101 University. Okay. So there's another seminar that uh uh Rick Frischman puts on. Yeah. And I went to that with my book proposal. So if you write a non-fiction book, one of the things you have to do is you have to write a book proposal. So I wrote a book proposal. I took it out there and they have like this speed it's kind of like a speed dating with publicists and mm-hmm. agents and uh, publishers. And then you kind of meet up with people and then they say if they're interested in your manuscript. So you need an elevator pitch for your book at that point, probably, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can we just talk about your entrepreneurial journey a little bit and or being an entrepreneur? Do you think yeah. culture is important from the beginning in a business? Yes, definitely. Um, I think culture is really important because I think one of the things when you're starting a business is you really need to think about your own values and what you really want out of the business. And one of the things is, um, you know, I've been both an entrepreneur and an um, uh, employee, Mm -hmm. and I can remember one of the best um, bosses that I ever had was Um, somebody who really knew the vision, the vision of where she wanted that company to go. And every time she told the story, she told the same story. And so it was easy to be on the same page, you know, and and you knew if you fit in. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're an entrepreneur, you need to know what your values are. And, you know, as you're going on that journey to tell that same story over and over and Mm -hmm. make sure you have the right people that are, are, with you on that vision and your values and knowing that they want to make a difference and and the same difference that you do. Mm -hmm. So she used her story to tell you her values. Is that what she essentially did? Right. That's that's Mm -hmm. very clever that because you're much more likely to remember something as a story than if it's just a pile of facts, aren't you? So yeah, that's really good. So knowing what you know now, is there anything that if you'd known it when you started out would have helped you to shortcut the learning curve? Um, so one of the things is, um, I would say is try, don't try to do everything yourself. So, um, when you get started and, and a lot of entrepreneurs are very independent, they, you know, they know the difference they want to make. They are very take charge people. They are get it done kind of people, but then sometimes they don't, um, allow other people to help them. And they want to try to do it themselves. So one of the things that I found when I started is I wanted to try to do a lot of it myself, of course. And I just didn't have the time. And I knew I had to figure out where my time was better spent Mm -hmm. and who were the people that could help me move my business forward without me doing everything. So, for example, I started trying to do my own website and then, you know, I was spending so much time learning how to do a website when I could have just, you know, when I could hire somebody to help me and the money is well worth spent if, if you're doing more value added tasks with your time. Yeah. That's a great tip though, because obviously learning to design a website is quite, there's quite a lot of skills involved in that as you find out when you try to do it. It's quite time consuming, isn't it? Yeah. If you go to to someone who knows how they're doing, how to do it, you get a better result quicker. So definitely worth it. Yeah. How much do you feel gut feeling influences your decisions in your business? Um, I would say a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always kind of like the person that kind of says, I I kind of go with my gut and I probably make decisions more quickly than maybe I should, but I just make the decision go on because I feel like if I'm sitting there mulling over it and asking everybody else's opinion, I'm never going to go forward. And, Mm -hmm. 
you know, what, what is the worst thing that can happen if I make that decision? That's kind of like what I ask myself. And then I use my gut, I go forward and then I just live with whatever happened. <laughs> yeah. Life is made of constant change, whether we like it or not. And some people would say that the only constant is change. So how do you try to keep up with change? Um, well, I, I, I love to learn. Mm -hmm. So, um, I like to learn about new things. Um, I think technology is one of the hardest things because it changes so fast. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can be like little things in technology can, can trip you up in your business. So, um, I think, um, you know, one of the things is also getting a good network of people that are experts in different areas so they can help you with the change. Because for you to like try to keep up with everything that's changing, I think that would be really, really hard. Yeah. Mm, some, some good points there. I mean, I think, I think now we live in a time where technology is changing things quicker than probably ever, any time in history. It's just it's yeah. incredible, isn't it, really? So. You, if you don't keep up with change, then you very quickly become obsolete because what you know is from 10 years ago or something. So you, you've got to right. const constantly keep up. What's your favorite book on entrepreneurialism, business, personal development, leadership, or motivation? And can you tell us why you've chosen it, please? Sure. So, um, uh, like I said, I love uh, All In Startup by Diana Kander. Mm -hmm. And the reason I love it is it's clever. Mm -hmm. So I love clever things. <laughs> and mm -hmm. One of the things is um, this book was written as a fiction book, but it teaches entrepreneurial lessons. A lot of the um, kind of lean startup lessons, that's kind of the new thing where you're going out and like um, getting your questions right, asking the prospects and the customers the right questions so that you can create the right products and um, help them solve their problems. Mm -hmm. But I really love that it was written in a um, fiction format because the story is so good and the way it teaches those lessons, I just think is so clever. And I would love to write a kid's book that would be something in that same kind of genre where it's fiction, but it teaches those lessons. Mm -hmm. Are you hinting at your third book here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On my to-do list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone, when you have a busy life, listening to audiobooks is a great way to expand your oh, knowledge yeah. in the time when you may be doing other things, such as driving or when you are at the gym. We have a special offer for you of a free audiobook of your choosing. To choose your free audiobook, go to www.freeaudiobookoffer.com. As long as you haven't already signed up, you will qualify. Julie, what I'd like to do now is, is just project into the future slightly here. So what one thing would you do with your business if you knew that you could not fail? Hmm. That's a hard question. <laughs> I think, I, think um, I would love to see um, all the middle schools mm -hmm. in, um, you know, in the U.S. or I think I think the U.S. maybe even is a little lacking to to the U.K. and Australia because I I see a lot of entrepreneurial activity in the in those two countries, mm -hmm. um, but to get the curriculum out there in the middle schools and have um, uh, schools start teaching it at that level, mm -hmm. and so I'm actually redesigning my website right now, and I'm I'm kind of like changing the whole thing to say join the young entrepreneur movement and so i'd love to like get a movement out there and get it into the lower grades a little bit more mm -hmm. so you need to go global i think and um, what skill if you were excellent at it would help you the most to double your business <laughs> um so i would have to say closing sales <laughs> okay I my husband is an excellent closer. I yeah. am a horrible closer because I I think one of the things that I see the value in it and I know the value, but I might not always be the best person to say, "Hey, you should try this because I you're going to succeed." I want them to to want it intrinsically mm -hmm. and that doesn't always happen. So, I think that would probably be my number one thing. I'm sure you can solve that. I'm sure you can to do it. <laughs> In five years from now, if a well-known business publication was publishing an article on your business after talking to your customers and suppliers, what would you like it to say? 
Um, well, I would like to, like them to say what a difference um, uh, they made in a difference in young entrepreneurs' lives, and um, and it had to do with uh, the curriculum and the tools and everything they used from e seedling. You know that they were able to actually implement that and and make that difference in uh, kids' lives. Okay, thank you for that. And um, we're now at the part of the show where we you share three golden nuggets with us, Julie. So, what is your favorite quote, and how have you applied it? Okay, so my favorite quote is: um, "Give a man a fish and feed him for." A day, teach a man to fish and feed him for a lifetime. And I don't always like the man thing, but you get the gist. Yeah, I get the idea. (laughs) So I look at entrepreneurship in that same fashion because um, if a kid can learn how to become an entrepreneur, he or she can be empowered in ways that they may have never imagined before. Yeah, that's powerful. Do you have any favorite online resources that you can share with us? You know, I was thinking about that when I – and – there are so many online mm. resources. So it's really hard, I think, to narrow it down. I mean, I have a, a few people that I follow um, yeah. and that I kind of learn from. Um, I don't know if you know who Marie Forleo is, but she's a, she's a pretty successful woman entrepreneur. And she's got a lot of, like, tips that she has. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that we have in the U.S., and I don't know if you have it in the U.K., but the Small Business Development Center Network, There's it, it's a national network. So every state has them, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's all kinds of business centers around that can um, help with teaching classes to helping you start your business, to helping get financing, to help you grow. So I would say, you know, those aren't necessarily online, but if you look around in your uh, communities or whatever, you might be able to find a business center that would help you. And a lot of those people have gone through a lot of um, entrepreneurial struggles so they can help so that you don't have to learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. I don't think we've got those in the UK, but we've probably got something similar, although I can't think of what. What is your best advice to other entrepreneurs? Okay. Um, I would say, uh, similar to the compound effect, to do yeah. one thing every day to move your business forward. Mm-hmm. Um, f- find out what works and be consistent about doing it. That's fantastic advice. Everyone, if you didn't manage to get a note of Julie's favorite resource or her favorite book, you can find links on the show notes page. Just go to the entrepreneurway.com and search for Julie or Julie Ann Wood in the search box. Julie, is there anything else that you'd like to add about your business? Um, I can't really think of anything specific, but I, I guess I would just say, you know, if you're interested in, in helping kids uh, learn more, I would love to have you connect with me and um, I would be happy to help. Okay, thanks for that. Julie, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here. It's great to see that you're doing something that's just really great for kids and, and, and spreading the word about entrepreneurship. So thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your ideas and your insight with us. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Entrepreneur Way. Subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Twitter at Neil D. Ball.